just turned in one of the better coaching jobs in the league this season. You had to have patience. This team needed some time to gel and come together. Let's not forget, you lose Elena Deladon. You know, it's uh, that's huge in itself. You have a brand new system and a new head coach. You've got some different faces on the team and also younger faces as well. Uh, you've had Cappy Pondexter miss some games with injury, one of your veteran players. You've had Courtney Vandersloot miss part of the, the early part of the season, you know, playing overseas with Eurobasket. So it just took some time. But speaking with Liberty coaching staff, they are looking at the sky as a dangerous, scary team. One and seven start, they have turned it around and eyeing an eighth spot in the playoffs. Underway at the Garden, where the Liberty have won six in a row here at MSG. Charles against Dolson, blows by her and blows by another score. She's now 20th all alone on the WNBA scoring list. And Tina Charles is the queen of counter moves, pump fakes, footwork. She showed the ball, got Dolson jumping and went to the rim. Has officially passed Shamiqua Holdsclaw, another Queens native who went to Christ the King as Copper knocks down the three. Charles wants it again. She'll face and fire. Oh, an offensive rebound, but she pushed off of Jessica Breland. Loose ball foul on Kia Vaughn. Now, Roz, both times down for the Liberty. They look to Charles in that matchup against Dolson, and she's one of two to start. Vandersloot, 12 assists, and a win against Connecticut on Friday. Almost knocked away, and this is going the other way. It's a foul on the Sun. Liberty opened up in a player-to-player -player defense. They're the number one field goal percentage defense in the WNBA. This is what they hang their hat on, and specifically against Chicago, speaking with Liberty coaching staff, they want to make sure they don't get back cut on. They need to communicate, they need to jump to the ball, they need to rotate, and have a, have a head on a swivel, because this team back cuts, moves, moves without the ball. Here's Prince trying to get free against Copper. There's the battle, Charles against Dolson. Tina goes to work, and connects. She's missed her last two. Three times in a row, as you mentioned, they're going straight inside to Tina Charles, allowing her to work. Now quickly, the all-star. Dolson catch and shoot, an air ball, and they'll let it bounce out for a possession. Whenever Allie Quigley or Courtney Vandersloot are dribbling the basketball, everyone else on defense must be super aware of their player. They're constantly dribbling, looking to find others. This team shares it well. They scored well, too, over 82 points per game on average. Harley was sworn. Zealous will fire in and out from three. And Dolson comes back for another rebound. Sky have scored it well recently. At least 90 points in four of their last five as Copper's off the mark. Zealous leads the Liberty in transition off the miss with two and change gone by. Charles to Vaughn, tough catch, and she's fouled. Coming down with it, will it be Vandersloot or Breland? Referees will confer, and this foul on Courtney Vandersloot. And that high-low game is going to be there. People are concerned about Tina Charles. Kia Vaughn has to continue to feel and work hard for positioning and be a threat on the court. Now, it's cool to see them work together. These are two players that grew up in New York, as did Epiphany Prince, the same age group about as well, so that they all grew up playing against each other or, or in the summer with each other. Um, so there's certainly a sense of community and family on this team. And also in speaking with Kia Vaughn, she's even said a sense of responsibility every time I come to the garden, knowing that people know me since I was a kid here. They know my mother, they know my family. I want to bring a championship home. So Tina led Christ the King. Kia Vaughn led St. Michael's Academy. Who led Archbishop Malloy around that time? <laughs> we were all playing. <laughs> we were all playing against each other at that time. A uh, nice move, Kia Vaughn. Nice denial there by Breland. It's going to stay with the Liberty. Actually, it's funny. You know, everybody, it's a, it's a nice sense of community going to practice or coming to the games, catching up, cracking jokes as Kia Vaughn tries to work inside. But a lot of the players, they have the same personalities. Epiphany Prince, quiet, but always kind of funny. Same way in the locker room now. 
Tina Charles has really grown, though, as far as her vocal and emotional leadership. Well, they'll get a third chance here. A couple of offensive rebounds for the Liberty. Nine to shoot for Prince on the reset. Goes up. Almost. But she's going to the free throw line. And that's somewhere the Liberty think they have an advantage today. Inside, getting on the glass, dominating the boards. Those offensive rebounds continue to wear on the defense and then open up some shots for the rest of the team. Last foul on Allie Quigley. Her first, already three now in Chicago. Liberty with one team foul to start this game. Now one more coming for Prince. Only needed to take 11 shots from the field on Friday to get to 20 points for the third time this season. She's been playing in rhythm. So confident, knowing exactly where she wants to get to, what spots. She takes her time, she changes speed very well, and then gets into the heart of the defense. Vandersloot got Hartley up in the air, quickly for three, in and out for the three-point champion in the shootout at the All-Star game in Seattle a couple of weeks ago. Prince here against Vandersloot. Charles directing her and now gets the feed from Zealous. Charles on a back down. In too deep. It was knocked out by Breland with 10 to shoot. And Copper came down with a little extra help crowding and double teaming on Tina Charles. Copper's got nice length. So it's a very disruptive double down from her. Six foot one, big wingspan. Here's Charles off the inbounds. Muscles it in. Yeah. That's a big matchup as we talked about at the top with Jessica Breland. And Tina Charles showing big body skills inside. That's how she could be a little finesse right there, showing she's got some strength, too. Well, since Chicago had that three from Copper to start the game, they're over five, and now a turnover. Hartley, no. Knocked out of bounds. It's going back to Chicago. Liberty have opened this game two for nine. Nothing to write home about offensively for either side. Yeah, Roz, here's the matchup we talked about in the backcourt. Vandersloot handles here against Hartley. Weaving through, pull up for Vandersloot. Got it, the product out of Gonzaga. You can never relax. She's probing, probing the defense, looking for gaps, getting the defense to collapse and emerge. Collapse around her. Shamonte Zellis has that shot, and then she's going to hit a teammate with an extra pass. First basket for Zealous. Vandersloot, Breland fakes. Breland handles, nice cut. Dolson works so well off the ball, and she converts for two. And Dolson actually started that play, setting the screen, and then slips it, getting to the rim. Just great reads of the defense. Charles watches and knocks it down from three. Tina Charles active to start seven points. She's three of five from the field. Vandersloot over Vaughn. And Charles gobbles up the rebound. Here comes Prince. Charles will try it again. Back to back three. Same spot. And some frustration from Dolson. Lots of help defensively. Timeout Chicago. Timeout Chicago. Tina Charles, 10 points to start this one. In a little over five minutes for the Liberty. Gunning for their eighth in a row. So far, so good here at the Garden. I'm paying attention. This team will back cut you, slip you. You've got to be aware. Dolson on the bench right now. So Amber Stocks looking for a different combination. Look who's coming on right now for Chicago. Cappy Pondexter has entered for the first time. Cappy Pondexter, formerly of the New York Liberty. And speaking Bringing of which, uh, Du Bogak has also come on for the first time. Also spent time with the New York Liberty. And Breland can shoot that. You know, that's something that the Liberty coaches were concerned about, is that the bigs, the post players for the Chicago team, they can all stretch the court. They're more worried about them outside than they are inside. All right, Charles, the spin. Tapped out to Prince. Hardly wants it. And she knocks it down for three. That's what you get up for offensive rebounds. Threes. 
They're open. The defense is scrambling. Reaching foul. Kia Stokes, who just came on for New York, trying to deny Vandersloot. Arras the Liberty, three of six from the outside to start this game. And this is a nice, aggressive move from Tina Charles, but she doesn't get it. The offensive rebound, now the defense is shifting. They're out of position. Just move the ball. You're going to find somebody open from three. Breeland attacking Charles. Fall away. Got it. Jessica Breeland now with four points. She's hit her first two shots. So Stokes with Charles up front. You have Prince out there with Hartley and Zealous. Zealous, lane open, blows by Pondexter, just missed it. Chicago shot it better. Last couple of minutes now, five of 10 to start this game. Stokes will challenge Pondexter. And a lot of contact off the ball. Zealous wrapping up Breeland. Shivante picks up the foul. Cabby Pondexter is providing a veteran presence for this team, taking on the role. Some earlier coming starting games, now off the bench, being the firepower they need off the bench. Somebody can handle the ball, tell people where to go, and deliver when they need production. Vandersloot crossover, ball fake and a denial block shot for Tina Charles. Hartley and the Liberty looking to push. High low, Stokes the catch, nice assist there for Tina. That's beautiful, high low action. Good quick pass, heads up mentality by Tina Charles, but great ceiling and footwork by Stokes inside. Ross had six assists for the Liberty on seven made baskets. Behind the back, oh, turnover. I'll tell you what, this Liberty offense is clicking. I think the defense plays into that, but they are making easier shots for one another. They're committed to moving the basketball. And a lot of that time doesn't work. Knocked away by Bogak. Hooper catch and shoot, and she knocks it down from three. Jordan Hooper, who they acquired in a midseason trade last month. Oh, Jordan Hooper has been having quite a season, just bouncing around from team to team. You know, timing, situation, injury. Just hasn't had a chance to stick anywhere. And right now, feels she's getting a pretty good shot with Chicago right now to stick. Acquired from Atlanta for Amani Boyette and Tamara Young. As Breeland trades it, it starts. She's three of three for six points. Breeland is killing, and she's doing it at distance. Oh, the speed, but the block shot that time. Breeland with another swat. Both ends of the court. Back to Vance, Charles with the steal. Has Hartley. Back to Charles, kicked, and out of bounds. The energy, though, the Liberty have displayed defensively, making a difference. A little offense off of defense, and look at Tina Charles, a post strip and a guard, and a great guard in Vandersloot. Spacing right there for that pass is off, but the energy is right. First rest of the game for Tina Charles. She's played eight minutes so far. Naya Renkakakunwe has come on for the Liberty. Rogers almost, but she knocked it away, and the Liberty forced a steal. Renkakakunwe clearing it out and hardly drains it. Good decision. Nobody stopped the ball. Players were sagging in deep into the paint. Hartley takes her time and pulls up for a wide open jumper. Raincock and Kunwe is always looking to do that, free up the shooters. You gotta have players on the team who are committed to the little things, screens, rebounds, box outs. Second chance, Pond extra nose, Stokes swoops in. Final minute here in the first quarter and the Liberty up by six. Harley squeezes through, had nowhere to go, reset, 10 to shoot. Prince off the bounce, comes up short. Stokes again, blocked but fouled. It's on Bull Gack, Liberty rookie from last year. And Hartley, gets, the team gets a little offense off of defense. Hartley in transition is going to get the ball here. Watch as nobody picks her up. Everybody's back. So she just pulls up for a jumper. And Rain Kakakunwe did a good job of clearing some space for her too. 
Kia Stokes to the line. 79% free throw shooter coming in. Friday night, the Liberty return to action to take on the San Antonio Stars. Coverage beginning at 7.30 Friday night here on MSG. Also available on MSG Go. Final home game of the regular season. Liberty win here today. They'll lock up at least a four seed and a first round bye in the playoffs and a home game here at Madison Square Garden. 24-16 New York over Chicago. Dolson back on for the sky. Pondexter, no good off the glass. And Lindsey Allen with the rebound for the Liberty. Ross, fresh unit out there for New York. Five reserves have been put on the floor by Bill Lambeer. Lindsey Allen, space cleared. Stokes with the rebound. Five seconds. Quickly takes it to the sky. One second. Knocked away. And that's it. End of one with New York up by eight. It hasn't been all pretty for the Liberty, but their defensive effort is there and it's creating good things for the team. Fitz, visit nyliberty.com slash junior to sign up. Well, the Liberty danced to what was at one point a nine-point lead. They shot three of six from three. That's why they're up after one. And right now, remember you said it's all reserves on the court for the Liberty. They stayed with that lineup. You're seeing a lot of confidence um, that Bill Lambeer has in his team and his reserves. They've come in individually and as a unit over this win streak and put together some nice moments. You go back to the loss against the sky here at the Garden July 14th. That, in a lot of ways, was rock bottom. That's when they had the turning point discussion with Isaiah Thomas. They started to have fun. They got back to a regular rotation, and with the roles more defined, it's made a much bigger difference. Having a set rotation is so important. It, it helps you be able to predict what's going to happen on the court. When am I going to be in the court? Where are my moments to strike? Where are the shots that I'm going to get? Who am I playing with? When can I kind of get a rhythm and expect to get in off the bench? You know, these types of things help when you get on the court, help you have the familiarity you need to have instant impact. Now, a little issue, so they're going to take another look before they begin the second quarter. Kurt Walker, one of the officials, along with Tony Dawkins and Fatu Sissoko Stevens. Amber Starks will work with her team here. And I guess the narrative for Chicago runs is one in seven start, won just two of their first 11 games. And yet here they are with injuries, a big trade, post Elena Deladon life. And they're still in that hunt a game and a half back for the final playoff spot. I think it speaks a lot to, to the staff and Amber Stocks' coaching ability this season. I mean, that's a first-year head coach who kept the locker room despite a tough, start, a, a tough start. I think having veterans helped that too. So the locker room stayed with it. You know, they continue to evolve and listen and grow. And now they're playing for something. This is a hungry, desperate team. No, we appreciate Kurt Walker running over to us and giving us the latest. They looked at a Bria Hartley three with about four minutes to go in that first quarter, and it stays a three. Liberty active defensively, four steals in the first quarter. On Dexter, on a kick, Rogers got a piece. It's going to stay with the uh, with the sky with 11 to shoot. But that's what Sugar does, active defensively. Here's Quigley gets free. And Rebecca Allen's there for the rebound. Liberty now plus six on the glass and running the floor. They were off to the races. Beautiful vision from Lindsay Allen and Rank Kakakunwe always sprinting her lane using the right habits. Second unit providing the energy. This is a very meaningful and important stint for them. They're doing great with the time. 
Lindsey Allen, no. And Pondexter fighting for the rebound, actually. Now as Bashar Graves who just came on. Coming into this game, Bill Lambier told me he wanted to get Lindsey Allen some more minutes, keep her confidence going. Just a rookie, but a very talented point guard that he sees potential. Off of this rebound, the, the second unit really put up the Jets here. Just a burst of speed before the Sky even had a chance to turn their heads. Uh, Bill's happy. Lindsey Allen getting the assist that last time down. He feels he has the, she has the best vision on this team. Vaughn just came on for Stokes. Kickball by Dolson. And a reset the shot clock to 14 seconds. Crazy to think, Roz. Lindsey Allen, final cut before the regular season. Second round pick out of Notre Dame. Lucky she was available. Mm -hmm. And when they brought her back in in May, she has not done anything to lose that job. And she stayed ready. Rogers off the curl. And the rebound taken by Graves. Upon Dexter Graves, quickly Dolson. And Hooper out there for Chicago. A lot of contact as Vaughn slams Dolson to the deck in that battle inside. And Kia Vaughn enjoys an opportunity to be physical. She likes that type of defense. So she's willing to work in there on Dolson. Both of them are trying to fight for early position in the spot, but she knocks her on the head there. Second foul on Kia Vaughn. I think Bill Lambeer back in his day, that would have been <laughs> pedestrian. Right. <laughs> That's right up his alley. Stokes will come back on. A little blow. Vaughn back to the bench with the two personals. Vandersloot just came back for Chicago. It's Uzella saying, what can you do? Breland here against Allen. Jessica Breland stripped. Touch by Chicago, well defended by Lindsey Allen. Guards getting their feet and hands active. Lindsey Allen, much smaller here, just moves her feet, stays in front, and Breland did the Cardinal sin. You can't bring that ball down for the guards to get their hands on. It's six foot three going against five foot eight. Rogers off the screen. And they can save it. Third turnover for the Liberty compared to seven for Chicago. And that's been a problem for the Liberty, turning over the ball, taking care of it. So right now, they're executing the way they want to on offense, making each possession count. Breland, this time, fires over Allen and hits. A couple of times, they have forced Lindsey Allen to switch to Breland. And she sees right over her. Eight points for Breland. She's four for her first four after scoring 15 at Connecticut Friday. Rebecca Allen steps out, can't connect. Rain Kakakunwe tied it up. Now we'll get a jump ball. Active on the glass, the native of Canada. This ball's up, up in the air, and it's Rain Kakakunwe hustling for the basketball. This is what she does. She brings energy. And also, speaking with the training staff, she's someone that is constantly asking, can I do more? Can I come in before practice, after practice, and get stronger, or work on my legs, or work on my core? She's just really a pro in that way, and it translates to the court. Her plus minus, in terms of trying to figure out what she brings when the team is on the floor, her plus minus on average, 13.3 plus, fourth in the WNBA. When she's out there, more often than not, the team's effective. Twenty-six to eighteen, Liberty. Almost three minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Breland high, low, knocked away, but a foul. As Stokes tried to climb up for the steal. Second foul on Kia Stokes, a second on the Liberty in this second quarter. Tina Charles back on with minutes again from Rain Kakakunwe. Now Tina Charles has had a chance to come in, be rested. It's going down the stretch. 
the Liberty, if they have the chance to win today and clinch that four seed in that first round bye, they still want to play hard, but rest will be important. Here's Breland in and out, and Stokes collects the rebound. So Charles and Stokes stay on the floor together, hardly just coming on for Lindsey Allen. Rebecca Allen was posting up there against Copper, and Kalia Copper for the Sky picks up her first foul, and that also the first on the Chicago Sky in the second quarter. Inbounds to Charles over Braylon. Too easy. Dolson. Copper looking Breland's way. Copper on the drive. Too much. Another rebound for Stokes. Boy, she is explosive. A lot of speed and length. No look. Rogers almost, but Stokes there to clean it up. Rogers is making the right plays. The shot's just not going down. Billy Ambier spoke to us before the game saying her percentages are down. We want to make sure to keep her in rhythm and feeling good heading into playoffs. How about Kia Stokes, 6.7 rebounds in eight minutes, and another steal for Rebecca Allen. Three on two, Hartley leans in, and the Liberty extend the lead. It's now 14, that's their largest. Twelve of the last 14 points for New York. And defensively, the Sky with eight turnovers. Braylon got Charles way up in the air, but it's going the other way. Offensive foul, charge drawn by Hartley. The Liberty defense is locked in. Charles gets blown by, but guess what? Her teammate is there ready, help side aware, outside the circle, waiting to take a charge. They force in turnovers. They're getting easy offense and transition off of the steals that they're getting on the defensive end. And then the bench from Kia Stokes here in the first half. You know, Kia Stokes is a player that has all the right blue collar habits. She's going to work hard and get you a block or work hard on the defensive end and work inside. She's going to get rebounds. You know, she's going to work hard for positioning, doing all the little things. Charles left yeah. open. That's been dangerous. Ah. Tina Charles, 14 points. She's hit a couple of threes as well. But Stokes Ross began the year in the starting lineup. Will Lambeer, once Kiavon came back from Europe, felt it was better bringing Stokes off the bench. And that's been the right thought. And for Stokes, it's been a year of trying to look for consistency. Wow, the Liberty are right on top of that backdoor cut. They know it's coming. Ten sky turnovers. Can the Liberty take advantage? Midway point, second quarter. Charles over Dolson, not that time. Feeling good from the top of the key. Says maybe I should have tried to work that around. Kia Stokes, the definition of X Factor. She understands ceiling and footwork, helping set up the passing lane for that lob. And then here, just blue collar effort, following the shot, offensive rebound, all the little plays. Quickly can't connect over Stokes. Rodgers leads the run out, looking Allen's way. Rebecca Allen gets the shooter's run. And the Liberty are playing up-tempo basketball. Getting out of a rebound, the defensive board quick and getting up the court, or forcing turnovers into transition opportunities. Six fast break points for the Liberty, none for Chicago. Eight to shoot for the Sky. Quickly. Here against Charles, offloads to Dolson, was hit as she shot it, and she banks it in for three. The bank is open early today on this Sunday. Gotta take it when you can get it. Stephanie Dolson, who was clutch here last time at the Garden, July 14th, now with five today. Dump to Charles. Tina carries in. And hook shot. Counter for Tina Liberty have led by as many as 18 so far. Dolson 
almost traveled, and the bank still open for Dolson. And the Liberty are playing Dolson tight. They respect the fact that she can stretch the court, so she's had to put the ball on the floor and try to go past the defense. Rogers calling for it. Sugar short. Rogers was 0 for 9 on Friday. She's now 0 for 3 today. But she's working on defense, creating havoc on the defensive end. Off another steal. Hartley collects and lays it in. All started by Sugar Rogers. Timeout, Amber Stocks. 11 first half turnovers for Chicago. And six now in the second quarter. Sky have struggled in the turnover department this year, almost 16 per game, but the Liberty, they forced seven steals so far. And for Sugar Rogers, she's got one of those. She's 0 for 3 from the field. She hasn't hit shots in the past couple games now, but she's plus 10 in her minutes on the court. She's making good things happen. She's, she's a part of positivity. And gets a much-deserved rest right now. New personnel for the Liberty as Wilback is denied twice. Last touch by the Liberty on the weak side with 10 on the shot clock. They talked about the vocal leadership of Tina Charles and the activity she's provided. Dolson off the inbounds, fouled by Zowie B. And Stephanie Dolson earns a trip to the free throw line for the first time here today for Chicago. You know, Stephanie Dolson and Rhea Hartley sharing the court right now. Not only did they play together in UConn, but they played together in Washington. And now with the big trade that came through, you know, bringing Elena Deladon there and having her leave Chicago and it took Dolson here, she's just kept an open mind. You know, she, both, and both of them have talked about it's been difficult to not play with each other. You know, because they, the, both Hartley and Dolson, they know each other very well. They've worked together. They've grown together. But Dolson also said she thinks it's actually good. She thinks it's good that they're able to blossom off and kind of do their own thing. Evolving as people, Bria Hartley had some Bryson back in January. And right. Dolson, fourth-year pro as well has had an all-star season with Chicago. Both traded by the Mystics in separate deals as Allen knocks it down off the curl. Rhea Hartley is from Long Island, North Babylon, and Stephanie Dolson from Orange County, New York, Minnesota Valley High School. Local products in their own right. Pondexter, too much, and Zowie B with the rebound. Ra's largest lead for Chicago has been one point. The Liberty have seized control of this game really from the start. I think what's important for the Liberty here is can they be a team that delivers a knockout punch that doesn't let a team back into the game? Can they be focused and deliver at this level of execution over the course of four quarters? A great point as they try for their 20th win of the season here today. Dolson fakes out hardly and it drops for Stephanie Dolson with 13 points so far in this first half. Make it 11 now. <laughs> Zowie B, the lob. Charles brings it down, and she's fouled. It's on Allie quickly, and sending Tina Charles to the line for the first time today. You talk to Tina Charles, and there's such an acceptance of responsibility of the position that she's in. You know, she will often say, I know that my individual success helps the team's success. I've got to be productive. We're not going to win if I am not producing rebounds and points and being aggressive and looking for my shot. There's no day or no game that Tina Charles can take off. Coming up at halftime, our chase for business spotlight, Manic Panic. We want to tune into that one, and Roz will speak with Katie Smith. One of these staff should be happy about where things stand now with a minute to go before the break. Nice feed. Pondexter threads it to Dolson. That's a very nice find by Cappy Pondexter. And you can hear her talking on the court. She's trying to keep the troops alive with their spirit. Allen can't answer. How about Zowie B? Hustles for the rebound. 
Prince hesitation, looking Zowie B's way, telegraphed it. Knocked out last by Tina Charles. The Liberty have out-rebounded Chicago 20 to 12, WNBA's top rebounding team, and first as well in defensive rebounds. So final 27 seconds before the break, about 12 seconds between the clocks. Pondexter, entry, deflected out, off the fingertips of Dolson, says Fatu Sissoko Stevens. Dolson thought that hardly touched it last. Sloppy miscues from Chicago and very active defense from the Liberty. It's the story of the game here. Shot clock off. Liberty can hold for the final shot here in the second quarter. Leading 44-29. Five seconds. Prince off the screen. Pull up for three. It's good. Put to the line. They'll say a long two. Final second. Breathe and won't get it off. And the Liberty with a 17-point lead at the break. Everything's clicking. Everyone on the roster getting in on it. And the offense is being helped by a, tenac a tenacious defense from the Liberty. We'll see if Sue Bird can accomplish history later today for Seattle. I have a feeling she'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a you good prediction. What? You know what? More importantly, are her teammates going to step up and make layups and make open threes? Because you know, it's more annoying when you're a point guard. You dishing it out, giving them dimes, passing nice balls to them. Your teammates just can't knock it down. You know she's going to get it to them. Just have to hit. Just got to hit, man. Start of the third quarter. Every game so important for Chicago. Down 46 to 29. Let's see what they can do coming out of the gate. Vandersloot off the bounce. Doesn't get it to go. And Charles collects another rebound. The fourth for Tina Charles today. Liberty now plus nine on the glass. Sabah about Prince? Quickly went flying. Prince was denied by Dolson. Eight to shoot. Prince over quickly. Counted. The Pimpley Prince now with six points. There's no hesitation. It feels like every shot that Epiphany is taking, it's a good shot for her in rhythm. She's really come along. Zealous didn't play much in the first half. Just six plus minutes picks up her second foul early in this third quarter. Ross coming back to Epiphany Prince, if you look back a year ago at this time, she was coming off the knee injury while she was playing. Mentally, she didn't have that confidence and trust. Much different story one year later. Yeah, last season was hard on Epiphany Prince. She was trying to get over the mental hump of, I'm not going to re-injure myself, or sometimes there would be discomfort with her comeback. And, and just being on the court, sometimes there would be discomfort with certain moves. She had to get over that. Nice cut, Kia Vaughn, surrounded. Charles looking Prince's way. She was calling for it. Prince buries it from three. And someone who's helped Epiphany Prince a lot during that time is Teresa Weatherspoon. But T Teresa Weatherspoon was away from the team for weeks now um, for personal reasons. She's back on the bench right now. And her impact and presence could not be felt even more. One of the top 20 players all time, the WNBA's first 20 years. Prince again. Look at Bria Hartley saves it right to Quigley, but you have to love the hustle. Vandersloot for the trailer, Dolson. And Dolson is going to the line, but they're sharing it, Roz. They're sharing it well. There's a lot less one-on-one -on -one trying to go up against set defenses. Instead, the Liberty penetrate, kick, make an extra pass, and find open, easier shots for each other. Prince with the foul. That was her first. And Stephanie Dolson to the line. And from a three-point shooting perspective, Liberty right now are four of ten. Last five games entering this one, they've shot on average about 40% from three. I think the, the quality of shots they're getting have improved, and that helps your shooting percentage. They're working the ball to get open shots. 51-31, Liberty. Prince leans in, 
Comes up short. A very late whistle. That doesn't make the sky happy, but there was contact, and Ali Quigley picks up the foul. That's her third, and the first on Chicago this half. And Epiphany Prince clean with the handle. Kind of gets bailed out for the shot. You know, I've, I've enjoyed talking with uh, old friends on the Liberty team, whether it's Kia Vaughn or Epiphany Prince, and, you know, they all know each other playing each other. Uh, they play together at Rutgers, but also just growing up in New York. And Kia Vaughn was saying how Epiphany Prince is so organized to the point where it makes her itchy. <laughs> you know, she's, she loves sneakers and things. All her shoes are very well organized. If you go by her locker, everything is nicely folded to the point where Kia Vaughn will sometimes go and troll her, like take her shorts or something and shake them up or take them out of the folded pattern. And it really bothers a bit of me. There is a respect level, as Harley Fowles Vandersloot, that you find from teammates of Epiphany Prince going back to even her AAU days. Oh, There's sure. a respect and admiration She's not the most vocal when speaking sometimes to fans and the media, but no question within that locker room, she is someone they all look up to. She's a great teammate. You know, she's got a fun, positive spirit. No, she's not the loudest, but she knows who she is. Luckily, a copper nice take answers for Chicago. And, you know, Epiphany Prince is a New York City basketball legend. You know, she, she went off for over 100 points in high school at Mary Burcham. You know, I remember playing Epiphany as a younger player and thinking, God, this girl is so strong. She just takes you to the rim relentlessly. There's nothing you can do. And then she worked on her jump shot. All coming together for the New York City native. Here's another Vaughn. Tough shot. And a shot clock violation forced by Chicago. Haven't been too many turnovers so far in the Liberty. That was their fifth compared to 12 for the Sky. In that game, Roz, with Murray Brook to uh, Bertram, 113 points, Prince breaking Cheryl Miller's record for most points in a game. Vandersloot slings it in, Dolson the spin and finish, and she'll have a chance at three. The Liberty never had a chance on that play. Watch where Dolson catches this ball. She's in so deep right now. Shavante Zealous is underneath the hoop. There's nothing she can do. Just gets caught behind the big girl in too deep. Third foul on Zealous. And yes, six foot five posting up the 5'10 Zealous. Right. Not easy. And it's a tough game for Zealous. She didn't play a lot in the first half. Right now, she's kind of gotten a few fouls again in the second. So it's hard for her to find her rhythm. Well, Vandersloot with the steal took it away from Hartley. Right. Three on two, quickly, in and out. And it's tapped out to Charles. Liberty don't want to get sloppy here. This is where Tina Charles has talked about closing out games. Hartley on the attack. Got it up, and it drops. By the way, Dolson with 18 of Chicago's 36 points. She scored half of them. Dolson, nowhere to go against Charles. Breland fires and hits with the shot clock coming down. Jessica Breland with 10 points. Fifty-five to thirty-eight, Liberty. Four and change gone by. Third quarter. Zealous has been quiet over Copper and Dolson. A stare down there of Vaughn. That's been a big battle inside as Dolson is called for the foul. And Zealous trying to get this shot off. Liberty working inside, Dolson with the stare down. What do you think if you were on the other end of that? Probably would give a stare down. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the Sky are kind of out of sync with what they do, and I think, you know, their posts are doing a great job. Reland, Dolson, they're playing hard and producing, but Vandersloot's got a lot of turnovers, and she's got to be better than that. Allie Quigley still has zero points. She's 0 for 7 from the field. You know, Cappy Pondexter even coming off the bench. She also has zero points right now, 0 for 4 from the field. So the veteran guards right now need to step up for Chicago. 
Amber Stocks watched as Vandersloot dished out 12 assists at Connecticut on Friday. Right now, two assists for Vandersloot. Two points. And last we checked, I think four turnovers. Good news for Chicago, no turnovers since the break. But the 12 in the first half were crippling. Prince, in and out. Stokes up for a big rebound. It's her eighth of the game. Reset, not to shoot. Prince again. And it falls to Quigley. Big screen leveled by Dolson. Quigley, reach and foul. And it's on Epiphany Prince. That's her second. And Liberty have committed five this quarter, so Chicago is now in the bonus with 5.23 to go in the third. I do Bolgak, former Liberty. Back in for Chicago. She was signed on Friday. What a debut. 15 minutes in Connecticut. Bolgak scored 14. She was 6 of 10 from the floor. Came in right away, started producing, played with confidence, played within the flow and rhythm of the game. Kerr Walker, one of the officials at the far side scores table. With Chicago in the bonus, trying to make sure that Quigley's the one who was fouled and should be at the line. Allie Quigley, an all-star season, ninth year out of DePaul, her fifth with the Sky. Former second-round pick who is well-traveled, played for four teams before she landed with Chicago, and they're going to review this with 5.23 remaining in this third quarter. Allie Quigley is a great example in the WNBA of a player who constantly improved and blossomed over the course of her professional career. You know, to the point where she's a two-time six woman of the year, an all-star this season, three-point champion. A very fiery matchup with Sugar Rogers down the stretch of the yes. New York Liberty, but this is a player she's worked. She's not necessarily fast, but she's deceptively quick. Um, you know, has worked on the ball handling, becoming more than just a, a spot-up shooter. She's crafty. You know, she's cagey out there. Defensively, she's worked on her feet. Every year improves, and she's taken on a bigger and bigger role each year in Chicago. Stay in the game with the New York Liberty app. Get team updates straight to your phone along with real-time stats, player interviews, and pre-game previews. Download the app today and never miss a moment. Chicago collectively now 7 of 7 from the line. Liberty 9 of 10 from the free throw line today. Charles wants it. Tina Charles kept it alive, gets the rebound, and is now headed back to the line. This was the advantage that Liberty felt they had. Yes, Chicago's posts are talented, but they do a lot of their damage, facing up and shooting perimeter. The Liberty felt they could go inside and be dominant. They could go in, go to the glass and rebound, and that's exactly what's happening here. Tina Charles going inside, following her shot, creating some opportunities. That was the second foul on Jessica Breeland, the third on Chicago. Charles, three of three at the line. She has 19 points and seven rebounds. And now back-to-back 20-point -back games. 19th game reaching 20 points this season. Even averaging a little less than 20 for the year. Hand off to Quigley. Eight to shoot for Chicago. Breeland against Charles. Off the mark. Another rebound for Tina Charles. Too shy of a double-double. Hartley for Stokes, a UConn yeah. catcher. Stokes! One thing they have done very well is get out in transition. They've got 12 points in the fast break. Their defense is creating all of that. 14 assists now for the Liberty as well. Hartley gets the last one. Zealous leads the break for New York after the miss. Charles fakes, drives Tina to the rim, and a chance at three for yes. Tina Charles. Yes. Tina Charles doesn't even see the defense. She's going right at them, straight to the rim, forcing them to have to stop her, and they can't. All they can do is foul. 
timeout. Liberty in command. It is a 21 point advantage. One, two dribbles kick up. The pass is faster than the dribble. And the Liberty beat the sky down the court. 10 0 in fast break points. Can't say enough about what Kia Stokes has done off the bench. Eight points, eight rebounds, and she's only played 13 minutes so far. She is the X Factor. You know, she makes the minute she's on the court count. Here comes Copper off the missed free throw. Coming up on four minutes remaining in this third quarter as the Liberty look to win their eighth straight game. Anders Lute for Dolson, short jumper doesn't go, and Zealous tapped it out to Rogers. Liberty plus 16 on the glass. Charles a spin, in and out, and the rebound to Bogak. Vandersloot with her speed. Circles. And Hardly steps in, intercepts. Rogers in and out. It just won't go for sugar right now. But as the coaches have told us, they just want her to, to not change the aggressiveness, the intention, the energy of her game. I know she's frustrated. That's not easy for any shooter to have consecutive games where the ball just won't go through the net. Let's put it this way. She scored 16, hitting her first five shots two games ago. The last two games, she hasn't made a shot, but it could come in waves and come quickly. Right. Don't lose the trust. Oh, Zealous, how about that fake? Copper almost hit the roof, and she comes down and commits the foul. Right here, just shows the ball a bit. Copper overzealous. Oh! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny how that worked. Copper was overzealous and went overzealous. And you know what? <laughs> I know you. You were not trying there. I was not. Gosh, that really... Oh, boy. Okay. It was all I'm with showing the my... The I'm showing my dork side right now. Come on. What are the chances of that, though? Overzealous? Overzealous? I'd put the odds at... Maybe five to two <laughs> in real time action. Right. That was impressive. I, that's a highlight call for me. <laughs> Here's Rain Kakakunwe. Charles exits. And Zealous is at the line. If she makes this, Liberty will have their largest lead by 23 with 314 to go in the third quarter. And Tina Charles has played 22 minutes. It's a rest right now, having scored 22. Copper, oh, she is explosive. Yeah. She's going to the line for a chance at three. Let her have a chance to get a full head of steam, go in straight lines. Her athleticism and length, she's got so much potential. Zealous, there it is again. That was her fourth foul. The zealous over zealous. That's for maybe you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Allen's coming back on for New York, and Zealous will indeed head to the bench. So, for Copper, a young player here, also Rutgers alumni with Cappy Pondexter, you know, part of the, the blockbuster Deladon trade that sent Deladon to Washington. She's a young player, did not play at Rutgers at the same time as Cappy Pondexter, but that still is a family sisterhood in a way. And Cappy has been really instrumental in mentoring Copper. You know, just being there for her, talking to her. Stokes offensive rebound, tip up. And Allen tracks it down. Liberty just pounding the glass so far. Rogers calling for it inside the arc. Rankaka Kunwe is fouled. Two, three, maybe four offensive rebounds on that sequence. She's just staying with the play. And you get rewarded for hard work. Third foul on Stephanie Dolson. Liberty have more than twice as many rebounds as the Sky in this game. They're dominating in every facet, defensively, on the glass, forcing turnovers, out in transition, running their lane. You know, they've really taken the guard play out of this game for Chicago. They've made it really tough. 
Brain Kakakunwe, 60% free throw shooter, now with three points. So Liberty defend with Lindsey Allen. Brain Kakakunwe, Rogers, Stokes, and Hartley almost forced another steal. Hooper for Dolson. Entry and Copper with the finish. Came over with Dolson and the number two pick, which turned out to be the injured Elena Coates in exchange for Deladon in the offseason. Rogers trying to find Harley. Pondexter knocked it out nine to shoot. Bill Lambeer will like this. 14 turnovers for Chicago, only six for the Liberty here today. The Liberty are number five in the league for turnovers per game. That's been the one weakness even during this win streak. Owner for Lindsey Allen. First basket for the rookie out of Notre Dame. 66 to 45, New York. Stokes knocked it away. Rogers. Allen was ahead of the pack, and Hooper deflected it out of bounds. Thank you. Kia Stokes forcing the latest turnover. Can't say enough. This has been a textbook Kia Stokes kind of game. Sets a screen for Rodgers on a switch here against Dolson. Law for Stokes. Tough catch. And the finish. In traffic. And you see Sean Rodgers. Great assist. Great heads up play. She's staying with it. Double, double Kia Stokes. 10 points, 10 boards. Copper hounded, and she is fouled. This is a tough catch by Stokes. It's in traffic. You know that she's got great hands and then just good concentration, keeping the ball high and finishing. Stokes has played 16 minutes. The double double, she's four of seven. And one more coming for Kalia Copper. Jessica Breeland back on for Chicago. Rebecca Allen re-enters for New York. And Bria Hartley exits for the Liberty. Leading by 22. And Copper's second year out of Rutgers. Seventh pick last year by the Washington Mystics. To the high post, Rain Kakakunwe for Rogers. Sugar trying to get free. Allen looking inside, nothing there. Rain Kakakunwe against Breland, scoops it up and in. Rain Kakakunwe! Liberty leads 70.7. Five now for the Canadian. Dolson, Rainmaker, that is Stephanie Dolson shot. 21 now for Chicago. Dolson has been a bright spot for Chicago in this game. 23 last visit to the Garden. 21 here today. Sugar Rogers finally her first basket after missing her first 14 over the last two games. There it goes. And you notice what it was closer to the basket, almost the layup. Can't get your shot going or the feel and touch on it. Get a layup. Here's Copper against Stokes. Allen able to tap it out to Rogers. Final eight seconds, shot clock off to round out this third quarter. Lindsey Allen sets the screen for three. And after three quarters, Liberty over the sky, 72 to 50. And if at first you don't succeed, and if at second and third time and fourth time and fifth. And for the Liberty, and they'll close the season at Dallas on September 3rd. Chicago, meanwhile, three games after this. That could help. They have a game in hand on Seattle, who they're chasing for the final playoff spot. And Cohen, Roz, Gold on Wude, our entire MSG crew here from the Garden today. Allen, Rain Kakakunwe, Roger Stokes, Rebecca Allen for New York. Rain Kakakunwe is denied. Block shot that time for Breland. Roz, what have the Liberty done defensively 
to limit Vandersloot and her opportunities to create for her teammates. Well, I think a lot of it, too, is what Vandersloot has done to put herself in bad situations. Occasionally, she's been caught over dribbling, turning the ball over when that happens. And overall, they're just trying to keep the great guard players that Chicago has, keep them taking contested jumpers. Rain Kakakunwe underneath is fouled. Going back to your point, Vandersloot has turned it over five times already here today after she had 12 assists in the win against Connecticut Friday. Right, you look at the combination of Quigley, Vandersloot, Pondexter, all all-star level players in this league. The three of them have combined for four points. Rebecca Allen. Rain Kakakunwe tapped it out, but Breland is there for Chicago. Chicago backcourt number Vandersloot was overseas in June. Hundexter missed some games with the concussion. Allie Quigley, oh, offensive you. foul. It's going the other way. And now they're pressing a bit. But this is a team that, over the course of the season, the story should be of overall improvements and gelling. A very slow, hard start. One and seven. You know, to begin the season, three and 12 at another point of the season. And now, find themselves at nine and six coming into this game. So surging, but they're just catching a red hot Liberty team with Rogers seven straight wins. From way out there. Sugar was just waiting for that opportunity. Sometimes you just need to see the ball go through the hoop. She made her last shot, and now she's shooting from deep. She'll take it first three here today. And a deflection, another steal for New York. Allen on a kick, Rodgers again. But that's how quickly it can get turned on when you're a great shooter. Nice answer, Vandersloot. They're going to review whether it was a two or a three for now. Cuts the lead down to 23, they say it's a two. Kakakunwe will take it. And the rebound to Kalia Copper. 17 turnovers for Chicago here today. Only six for the Liberty. And a block shot. Stokes got a piece against Copper. Lindsay Allen. She's never in a rush. The poise, the patience. Far beyond her years as a rookie. You know, makes the right decision to pull it back out. Sets up Sugar. Three to shoot, Rain Kakakunwe. And the rebound tapped out to Vandersloot. Vandersloot sets up Dolson. Trying to clear out. A lot of contact there, and Stokes is whistled for the foul, even with Dolson a bit out of control. It's the third foul on Kia Stokes. An important time right now for reserves for the Liberty to get some meaningful playing time. You know, get some experience on the court and also get rest for your starters. Stokes getting a nice round of applause. Completely deserving. A double-double for her. The X factor in this game. Zally B with this foul, but it's the fourth double-double for Stokes in her first since July 30th at Chicago when she scored 10 with 16 rebounds. And before the game, she was speaking to some members of the Junior Liberty Club. Some words of wisdom, native of Marion, Iowa. She delivered on the court today. Rogers, the turnover. Up ahead is Dolson, and she's fouled by Lindsay Allen. But even there, you, you see the communication defensively. Liberty team has been locked in for weeks now, and you could see the hustle there even sending Dolson to the line. The words the coaching staff have used with me is the team's defense is just more active right now. It's connected. They're on a string together. They're communicating. They're rotating. Their feet are moving. Their hands are high and getting deflections. Bill Lambeer had that great quote a couple of weeks ago. He said, I told you guys all year long we'd finally figure out who we are in the month of August. 
They've been playing to that identity, no question, during this winning streak. Zowie B, the only Liberty that hasn't scored. Rebecca Allen adds to her toll. It's a three for the Australian. And one thing Bill Ambeer said is moving the ball, passing it, making the extra play becomes contagious. You know, you see it works, you keep it going. Turnover, Cappy Pondexter. See the frustration here for Chicago. 20 turnovers have been turned into 17 points so far by the Liberty. And five turnovers here in the fourth quarter for the Sky. Rogers catch and shoot. Sally B the rebound. Rebecca Allen. Lindsay Allen now. Always looking. Rogers the open three and tries and scores. It's a good pass. It's a great cut right behind the defense. That ball was whipped around. Rogers scoring with three to shoot. And the answer from Chicago. Courtney Vandersloot now with six. Eighty to fifty-five, Liberty. They've been up as many as twenty-seven. Largest lead for the Sky, just one here today. That was thirty-two seconds into the game. Rogers trying to beat the shot clock, came up short. Timeout. Timeout, Chicago. Four players rise. Waiting at the far table like a line change for the Blackhawks. Extra pass, ball movement, and Sugar Rogers cutting behind the defense. We round around that. Remember, last year they won 21 games. Got a bye, hosted in the playoffs, but they lost to Phoenix. But it was different then. Tiffany Prince wasn't herself. She is now. And I think the mentality of this team is in a different place than it was a year ago. They're surging. They're moving upwards into playoffs. The Liberty really peaked early last season. And by the time they got to the playoffs, resting players, injuries, different things hit them. You know, when you get to playoffs, it's about momentum and health, you know. Sometimes you can't control all of that. Gray is one of the players coming in for Chicago, and Zowie B with the deflection. It's a chance for the reserves to perhaps close it out for New York. All five players on the floor. Subs here today for the Liberty. Zowie B has yet to score. Brought it down. Couldn't hold on. Zowie B, here she goes. And all the living Liberty on the scoreboard today. Shavante Zellis loves it. She knows. And the Liberty are just happy for each other. Hooper, Rainmaker, does not go. Lindsey Allen with the rebound. Another chance. Zowie B, back to back for the native of Sweden. It's collective, isn't it? And a steal, Rebecca Allen. Here she comes. Guy trying to answer here, trailing big by 29. Final four minutes at the Garden. Nice feed, and Graves came up short. He's going to stay with Chicago. Nice setup by Quigley. That's a beautiful pass. You know, Graves is upset with herself, but since she's been back in the game, she has been working hard, defensively trying to move her feet, make the most of these minutes, a chance to make an impression on coach. You know, just unfortunate can't come up with the bunny layup, but it's not for lack of effort. Defensively, think about this week for the Liberty. Forced a season high for an opponent, 18 turnovers. Indiana coughed it up that many times on Wednesday. Here today, 21 turnovers by Chicago. That's the most by a Liberty opponent this season. Some self-inflicted wounds, many Liberty hands just being active. We have spoken about the identity of this team. And at their core, tough, gritty group. 17 offensive boards for the Liberty. 
two for Chicago. They've wiped them off the glass. Turnover on the inbounds. That was the eighth on New York today. Hooper's open. Former Big Ten Player of the Year at Nebraska. Came over in the trade with Atlanta. It goes to Rebecca Allen. And she drags it. Allen. It's coming up all Liberty. Lead 29 again, matching New York's largest. Their biggest win this season was by 30 against Washington in mid-July. This will go the other way. And Jordan Hooper is going to get called with an illegal screen. She's trying to get her teammate open, but just too much movement on the hip and shoulders. Liberty closing in on eight consecutive victories. Let's say, at best, the Liberty win out into playoffs. You get that first game by. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> because then you kind of get out of the rhythm of the momentum you built, right? I was speaking with the coaching staff, and, you know, what Herb Williams said to me was, it depends on the type of team you have. We have the type of team he thinks there's enough experience and maturity and accountability that even with the days off, it's not like they're going to forget basketball or not do the little things it takes to be successful. Also in the table, they are now a half game back of Connecticut for the third spot. Liberty have two more games after this against San Antonio. That's on Friday here at the Garden, and then at Dallas. Oh, a scissor kick there by Copper, couldn't finish it. Zowie B adds more to her total. Six points, five rebounds in eight minutes. Zowie B has found a cookie jar in the middle of the paint. She's just turning over her shoulder. Cooper off the mark from three, and Rodgers. Play better down the stretch of this one. Zowie B wants it again. And I guess a reminder, gotta be cautious <laughs> against his defense. And Bill Ambeer with a smile on his face is going easy, easy. <laughs> and when she was in a little bit deeper, this has been her bread and butter inside. She's been working that right over her shoulder. And then she just had to get that heat check up. Liberty perhaps could be their biggest win of the season if they win by at least 30. A copper cuts into that. She'll have a chance at three with 136 remaining. Copper showing her potential as a slasher in this league. And what she's shown over and over, you've got to try to keep her off of that right hand because she wants to get to the basket going right. She's very dominant that way. Philadelphia native completes the three-point play. 17-point effort here today for Kalia Copper. 88 to 60, New York. Tina Charles has yet to play in the fourth quarter. Her teammates doing the rest of it. Great cock and away. Converts. Roz, we knew at this point of the season is Allen with the steal. Has Rain Kakakunwe, and she's fouled by Michaela Epps. That Bill Lambeer, healthy roster, everyone available after Vaughn and Prince went to Europe. There was depth. It was just a matter of when would it all come together. At first, when he had the full complement, it didn't. That changed in mid-July, and they haven't looked back. You know, I spoke with Kia Stokes about it, and she said, it's been such a weird year. Like, it just feels off. And gradually, this team stayed with it. You know, they continued to like each other and uh, stay close as a unit off the court. It started to translate. Rain Kakakunle, look at the hustle. Tie up, we'll get a jump ball with 55 seconds remaining. This is the effort and hustle you want to see. Liberty up 30, and they're sacrificing their body, getting on the floor. These minutes mean something to them. Well, that's always a great sign, right? Final minute, Bill's all smiles. Yeah, it was, sometimes Bill Lambeer, he won't be smiling all the time. That's good to see him having some fun. They beat Washington Friday 
key 14-2 run in the second half, and he said afterwards, I don't think we played well at all. The defense was <laughs> lackluster. In this league, any win's a great feat. He said, hey, we got the win. We didn't play well. I guess it's a different story on the other side with Amber Stocks here today. No, and, and certainly right now, the Sky are playing for something. You know, they're trying to squeak in to that eighth seed for the playoffs. Roller coaster up until this point. One and seven start. They were four and two in August before this one today. But down by 30 right now. And Roz, Courtney Vandersloot, 12 assists on Friday, two assists here today. Much different story. Rogers. Rain Kakakunle. Just epitomizing the way this team plays. Now we beat a couple of more points. Now with eight. Very nice showing here for Zowie down the stretch. This is important for her confidence and for the coach's confidence in her. Cop eyeing a career high. In and out. Sitting on 17 right now. Michaela Abs the steal. Oh, oh, flick up off the glass and in. Liberty cruising right now. Eight consecutive wins. Third straight year with 20 wins. First time in franchise history. The Liberty cruise 92-62 over Chicago today. They did it as a unit. First unit, second unit, both ends of the court. Everybody getting involved. Everyone on the roster scoring. They got their star players some rest from top to from the start of the game to the end. They handled their business. The Liberty, something great is brewing right now for this squad. Liberty have won seven straight here at Madison Square Garden. They match their largest win of the season. They beat Washington by 30 in July. Fast forward to today, a 30-point win over Chicago. Team they lost to in what was a turning point loss in this building back on July 4th. She's turned in one of the better coaching jobs in the league this season. You had to have patience. This team needed some time to gel and come together. Let's not forget, you lose Elena Deladon. You know, it's uh, that's huge in itself. You have a brand new system and a new head coach. You've got some different faces on the team and also younger faces as well. Uh, you've had Cappy Pondexter miss some games with injury, one of your veteran players. You've had Courtney Vandersloot miss part of the, the early part of the season, you know, playing overseas with Eurobasket. So it just took some time. But speaking with Liberty coaching staff, they are looking at the sky as a dangerous, scary team. One and seven start. They have turned it around and eyeing an eighth spot in the playoffs. Underway at the Garden, where the Liberty have won six in a row here at MSG. Charles against Dolson blows by her and blows by another score. She's now 20th all alone on the WNBA scoring list. And Tina Charles is the queen of counter moves, pump fakes, footwork. She showed the ball, got Dolson jumping, and went to the rim. Has officially passed Shamiqua Holdsclaw, another Queens native who went to Christ the King as Copper knocks down the three. Charles wants it again. She'll face and fire. Oh, an offensive rebound, but she pushed off of Jessica Breland, loose ball foul on Kia Vaughn. Now, Raz, both times down for the Liberty. They looked at Charles in that matchup against Dolson, and she's one of two to start. Vandersloot, 12 assists in a win against Connecticut on Friday. Almost knocked away, and this is going the other way. It's a foul on the Sun. And Liberty opened up in a player-to-player -player defense. They're the number one field goal percentage defense in the WNBA. This is what they hang their hat on, and specifically against Chicago, speaking with Liberty coaching staff, they want to make sure they don't get back cut on. They need to communicate, they need to jump to the ball, they need to rotate, and have a, have a head on a swivel, because this team back cuts, moves, moves without the ball. Here's Prince trying to get free against Copper. There's the battle. Charles against Dolson. Tina goes to work. 
Can't connect. She's missed her last two. Three times in a row, as you mentioned, they're going straight inside Tina Charles, allowing her to work. Now quickly, the all-star. Dolson catch and shoot, and air ball. And they'll let it bounce out for a possession. Whenever Allie Quigley or Courtney Vandersloot are dribbling the basketball, everyone else on defense must be super aware of their player. They're constantly dribbling, looking to find others. This team shares it well. They scored well, too, over 82 points per game on average. Harley was sworn. Zealous will fire in and out from three. And Dolson comes back for another rebound. Sky have scored it well recently. At least 90 points in four of their last five as Copper's off the mark. Zealous leads the Liberty in transition off the miss with two and change gone by. Charles to Vaughn, tough catch, and she's fouled. Coming down with it. Will it be Vandersloot or Breland? Referees will confer. And this foul on Courtney Vandersloot. And that high-low game is going to be there. People are concerned about Tina Charles. Kia Vaughn has to continue to seal and work hard for positioning and be a threat on the court. And it's cool to see them work together. These are two players that grew up in New York, as did Epiphany Prince, the same age group about as well, so that they all grew up playing against each other or, or in the summer with each other. Um, so there's certainly a sense of community and family on this team. And also in speaking with Kia Vaughn, she's even said a sense of res responsibility every time I come to the garden, knowing that people know me since I was a kid here. They know my mother, they know my family. I want to bring a championship home. So Tina led Christ the King, Kia Vaughn led St. Michael's Academy. Who led Archbishop Malloy around that time? <laughs> we were all playing. <laughs> we were all playing against each other at that time. A uh, nice move, Kia Vaughn. Nice denial there by Breland. It's going to stay with the Liberty. Actually, it's funny. You know, everybody. It's a it's a nice sense of community going to practice or coming to the games, catching up, cracking jokes as Kia Vaughn tries to work inside. But a lot of the players, they have the same personalities. Epiphany Prince, quiet, but always kind of funny. Same way in the locker room now. Tina Charles has really grown, though, as far as her vocal and emotional leadership. I don't get a third chance here. A couple of offensive rebounds for the Liberty. Nine to shoot for Prince on the reset. Goes up. Almost. But she's going to the free throw line. And that's somewhere the Liberty think they have an advantage today. Inside, getting on the glass, dominating the boards. Those offensive rebounds continue to wear on the defense and then open up some shots for the rest of the team. Last foul on Allie Quigley. Her first, already three now in Chicago. Liberty with one team foul to start this game. Now one more coming for Prince. Only needed to take 11 shots from the field on Friday to get to 20 points for the third time this season. She's been playing in rhythm. So confident, knowing exactly where she wants to get to, what spots. She takes her time, she changes speed very well, and then gets into the heart of the defense. Vandersloot got Hartley up in the air, quickly for three, in and out for the three-point champion in the shootout at the All-Star Game in Seattle a couple of weeks ago. Prince here against Vandersloot. Charles directing her and now gets the feed from Zealous. Charles on a back down. In too deep. It was knocked out by Breland with 10 to shoot. And Copper came down with a little extra help crowding and double teaming on Tina Charles. Copper's got nice length. So it's a very disruptive double down from her. Six foot one, big wingspan. Here's Charles off the inbounds. Muscles lead. Yeah. That's a big matchup as we ah. talked about at the top with Jessica Breland. And Tina Charles showing big body skills inside. Sometimes she can be a little finesse right there showing she's got some strength too. Well, since Chicago had that three from Copper to start the game, they're over five and now a turnover. Hartley, no. Knocked out of bounds. It's going back to Chicago. Liberty have opened this game two for nine. Nothing to write home about offensively for either side. Yeah, Roz, here's the matchup we talked about in the backcourt. Vandersloot handles here against Hartley. 
weaving through. Pull up for Vandersloot. Got it. The product out of Gonzaga. You can never relax. She's probing, probing the defense, looking for gaps, getting the defense to collapse and emerge. Collapse around her as Shavante Zellis has that shot. And then she's going to hit a teammate with an extra pass. First basket for Zealous. Vandersloot, Breland fakes. Breland handles, nice cut. Dolson works so well off the ball, and she converts for two. And Dolson actually started that play, setting the screen, and then slips it, getting to the rim. Just great reads of the defense. Charles launches and knocks it down from three. Gina Charles acted to start seven points. She's three of five from the field. Vandersloot over Vaughn. And Charles gobbles up the rebound. Here comes Prince. Charles will try it again. Back to that three. Same spot. And some frustration from Dawson. Lots of help defensively. Timeout Chicago. Timeout. Tina Charles, 10 points to start this one in a little over five minutes for the Liberty. Gunning for their eighth in a row. So far, so good here at the Garden. I'm paying attention. This team will back cut you, slip you. You've got to be aware. Dolson on the bench right now. So Amber Stocks looking for a different combination. Look who's coming on right now for Chicago. Cappy Pondexter has entered for the first time. Cappy Pondexter, formerly of the New York Liberty. And speaking Bringing of which, uh, Du Bogak has also come on for the first time. Also spent time with the New York Liberty. And Breland can shoot that. You know, that's something that the Liberty coaches were concerned about, is that the bigs, the post players for the Chicago team, they can all stretch the court. They're more worried about them outside than they are inside. All right, Charles, the spin. Tapped out to Prince. Hardly wants it. And she knocks it down for three. That's what you get off of offensive rebounds. Threes. They're open. The defense is scrambling. Reach and foul. Kia Stokes, who just came on for New York, trying to deny Vandersloot. Maraz the Liberty, three of six from the outside to start this game. And this is a nice, aggressive move from Tina Charles, but she doesn't get it. The offensive rebound, now the defense is shifting. They're out of position. Just move the ball. You're going to find somebody open from three. Breland attacking Charles. Fall away. Got it. Jessica Breland now with four points. She's hit her first two shots. So Stokes with Charles up front. You have Prince out there with Hartley and Zealous. Zealous, lane open, blows by Pondexter, just missed it. Chicago shot it better. Last couple of minutes now, 5 of 10 to start this game. Stokes will challenge Pondexter. And a lot of contact off the ball. Zealous wrapping up Breland. Shivante picks up the foul. Cabby Pondexter is providing a veteran presence for this team, taking on the role. Some earlier coming starting games, now off the bench, being the firepower they need off the bench. Somebody can handle the ball, tell people where to go, and deliver when they need production. Vandersloot crossover. Ball fake and a denial. Block shot for Tina Charles. Hartley and the Liberty looking to push. High low. Stokes the catch. Nice assist there for Tina. That's beautiful. High low action. Good quick pass. Heads up mentality by Tina Charles, but great ceiling and footwork by Stokes inside. Ross has six assists for the Liberty on seven made baskets. Oh, in the back, oh, turnover. I'll tell you what, this Liberty offense is clicking. I think the defense plays into that, but they are making easier shots for one another. They're committed to moving the basketball. And the lob that time doesn't work. Knocked away by Bogak. Hooper catch and shoot. 
And she knocks it down from three. Jordan Hooper, who they acquired in a midseason trade last month. Uh, Jordan Hooper has been having quite a season, just bouncing around from team to team. You know, timing, situation, injury. She hasn't had a chance to stick anywhere. And right now, I feel she's getting a pretty good shot with Chicago right now to stick. Acquired from Atlanta for Monty Boyette and Tamara Young. As Breland trades it, good start. She's three of three for six points. Breland is killing, and she's doing it at distance. Oh, the speed, but the block shot that time. Breland with another swat. Both ends of the court. Back to Vance, Charles with the steal. Has Hartley. Back for Charles, kicked. And out of bounds. The energy, though, the Liberty have displayed defensively making a difference. A little offense off of defense. And look at Tina Charles, a post strip and a guard. And a great guard in Vandersloot. Spacing right there for that pass is off. But the energy is right. First rest of the game for Tina Charles. She's played eight minutes so far. Naya Renkakakunwe has come on for the Liberty. Rodgers almost, but she knocked it away, and the Liberty forces steal. Good decision. Kunwe clearing it out, and hardly drains it. Good decision. Nobody stopped the ball. Players were sagging in deep into the paint. Hartley takes her time and pulls up for a wide-open jumper. Raincock Kunwe is always looking to do that, free up the shooters. You gotta have players on the team who are committed to the little things. Screens, rebounds, box outs. Second chance, Pond extra nose, Stokes swoops in. Final minute here in the first quarter, and the Liberty up by six. Harley squeezes through, had nowhere to go, reset, 10 to shoot. Prince off the bounce, comes up short, Stokes again, blocked but fouls. It's on Bull Gack, Liberty rookie from last year. And Hartley gets the team gets a little offense off of defense. Hartley in transition is going to get the ball here. Watch as nobody picks her up. Everybody's back. So she just pulls up for a jumper. And Rankaka Kunwe did a good job of clearing some space for her, too. Kia Stokes to the line. 79% free throw shooter coming in. Friday night, the Liberty return to action to take on the San Antonio Stars. Coverage beginning at 7.30 Friday night here on MSG. Also available on MSG Go. Final home game of the regular season. Liberty will win here today. They'll lock up at least a four seed and a first round bye in the playoffs and a home game here at Madison Square Garden. Four sixteen New York over Chicago. Dolson back on for the sky. Pondexter no good off the glass, and Lindsey Allen with the rebound for the Liberty. Ross, fresh unit out there for New York. Five reserves have been put on the floor by Bill Lambeer. Lindsey Allen, space cleared. Stokes with the rebound. Five seconds. Quickly takes it for the sky. One second. Knocked away. And that is it. End of one with New York up by eight. It hasn't been all pretty for the Liberty, but their defensive effort is there and it's creating good things for the team. Fits. Visit nyliberty.com slash junior to sign up. Well, the Liberty danced to what was at one point a nine-point lead. They shot three of six from three. And that's why they're up after one. And right now, remember you said it's all reserves on the court for the Liberty. They've stayed with that lineup. You're seeing a lot of confidence um, that Bill Lambeer has in his team and his reserves. They've come in individually and as a unit over this win streak and put together some nice moments. You go back to the loss against the sky here at the Garden July 14th. That, in a lot of ways, was rock bottom. That's when they had the turning point discussion with Isaiah Thomas. They started to have fun. They got back to a regular rotation, and with the roles more defined, it's made a much bigger difference. Having a 
set rotation is so important. It, it helps you be able to predict what's going to happen on the court. When am I going to be in the court? Where are my moments to strike? Where are the shots that I'm going to get? Who am I playing with? When can I kind of get a rhythm and expect to get in off the bench? You know, these types of things help when you get on the court, help you have the familiarity you need to have instant impact. Now, a little issue, so they're going to take another look before they begin the second quarter. Kurt Walker, one of the officials, along with Tony Dawkins and Fatu Sissoko Stevens. Amber Stocks will work with her team here, and I guess the narrative for Chicago runs is one and seven start, won just two of their first 11 games, and yet here they are with injuries, a big trade, post Elena Deladon life, and they're still in that hunt a game and a half back for the final playoff spot. I think it speaks a lot to, to the staff and Amber Stocks' coaching ability this season. I mean, that's a first-year head coach who kept the locker room, Despite a tough start, a, a tough start, I think having veterans helped that too. So the locker room stayed with it. You know, they continue to evolve and listen and grow. And now they're playing for something. This is a hungry, desperate team. No, we appreciate Kurt Walker running over to us and giving us the latest. They looked at a Bria Hartley three with about four minutes to go in that first quarter, and it stays a three. Liberty active defensively, four steals in the first quarter. Pondexter on a kick. Rogers got a piece. And it's going to stay with the uh, with the sky with 11 to shoot. But that's what Sugar does, active defensively. Here's Quigley gets free. And Rebecca Allen's there for the rebound. Liberty now plus six on the glass and running the floor. They were off to the races. Beautiful vision from Lindsay Allen and Rain Cockapoo always sprinting her lane using the right habits. Second unit providing the energy. This is a very meaningful and important stint for them. They're doing great with the time. Lindsay Allen, no. And Pondexter. Fighting for the rebound, actually. That was Bashar Graves who just came on. Coming into this game, Bill Lambier told me he wanted to get Lindsay Allen some more minutes, keep her confidence going. Just a rookie, but a very talented point guard that he sees potential in. Off of this rebound, the, the second unit really put up the Jets here. Just a burst of speed before the Sky even had a chance to turn their heads. Uh, Bill's happy. Lindsay Allen getting the assist that last time down. Bill, she has the she has the best vision on this team. Vaughn just came on for Stokes. Kickball by Dolson. Reset the shot clock to 14 seconds. Crazy to think, Roz. Lindsay Allen, final cut before the regular season, second round pick out of Notre Dame. Lucky she was available, mm -hmm. and when they brought her back in in May, she has not done anything to lose that job. And she stayed ready. Rogers off the curl, and the rebound taken by Graves. So Pondexter, Graves, Quigley, Dolson, and Hooper out there for Chicago. A lot of contact as Vaughn slams Dolson to the deck in that battle inside. And Kia Vaughn enjoys an opportunity to be physical. She likes that type of defense. So she's willing to work in there on Dolson. Both of them are trying to fight for early position in the spot, but she knocks her on the head there. Second foul on Kia Vaughn. I think Bill Lambeer back in his day, that would have been <laughs> pedestrian. Right. <laughs> That's right up his alley. Stokes will come back on. A little blow. Vaughn back to the bench with the two personals. Vandersloot just came back for Chicago. It's Uzella saying, what can you do? Breland here against Allen. Jessica Breland stripped. Last 
touch by Chicago. Well defended by Lindsey Allen. Guards getting their feet and hands active. Lindsey Allen, much smaller here, just moves her feet, stays in front, and Breland did the Cardinals send. You can't bring that ball down for the guards to get their hands on. That's six foot three going against five foot eight. Rogers off the screen. And they can save it. Third turnover for the Liberty compared to seven for Chicago. And that's been a problem for the Liberty, turning over the ball, taking care of it. So right now, they're executing the way they want to on offense. Making each possession count. Breland, this time, fires over Allen and hits a couple of...